on today's episode, Where's My Flying Car? Today's episode of End of the Line is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.tv today. You know, there are a few technologies that have been more anticipated and more predicted by science fiction than the personal air vehicle or flying taxi. The Jetsons had one, and most futurists at the time of that TV series, the early 60s, well, they were predicting that by now they'd be commonplace. Now they're not, but it isn't due to a lack of interest. Multiple companies from garage-based entrepreneurs to aerospace heavyweights are developing personal air vehicles with VTOL capability, most of them based on lightweight electric propulsion and battery packs. Now, battery electric propulsion is likely a non-starter for a conventional large commercial aircraft use, simply because the batteries are heavy, but many experts feel that a 15-minute flight endurance with a reasonable reserve is plenty for rooftop-to-rooftop -rooftop operation in cities, especially if a fast recharging capability can be developed. Now, 70 years ago, it was predicted that helicopters would serve this purpose, but these new flying machines are different. Large rotors are efficient, but the aerodynamics of advancing and retreating blades relative to the direction of flight requires constant changes to the blade's angle of attack, using complex swash plates and linkages at the rotor head. Now, most current personal air vehicle systems use simple fixed-pitch fans with contra-rotating configurations to cancel out torque and aerodynamic effects and minimize the pronounced gyroscopic forces involved in helicopter flight. Now, making it all work, of course, is flight control software, and a challenge will be introducing enough redundancy in both the power plants and the control electronics to allow a reliable emergency auto land system. Now, Garmin, the folks who make my watch, have a prototype robotic auto land system for business jets now, so the technology exists. So it looks like we're ready to go, but wait, did anyone ask the lawyers? With the airspace over the world's cities filled with people in pods, it's inevitable that something bad is going to happen. Now, what happens then? Of course, one answer is insurance, and at present, development of markets and products for that risk seem to be as complicated as the power plants and flight dynamics. Put simply, the insurance industry doesn't know where to begin. Now, these are not aircraft in the strict sense of the word. They won't be piloted like fixed-wing aircraft or helicopters. They may be autonomous, with no safety pilot at all. With no track record to gauge risk, and entirely new technologies in flight control, motors, and airframes, there's no risk profile on which to base coverage. So what happens to the technology? Now, a similar problem occurred in the early days of commercial aviation, and one solution was domestic law and international agreements that limited a common carrier's liability in the case of a plane crash. Now, ambulance chasing lawyers and an out-of-control product liability regime in America, well, that's been a long-standing problem, but this is terra incognita. So at this point, it appears inevitable that some form of legislation will be necessary to manage risk and kickstart an economically viable personal air transportation industry. So who's going to do it? There are no signs the Biden administration is aware of this issue, and the first prototypes of these vehicles will likely be handled by professional pilots, so there may be a way to ease regulators and the insurance industry into the concept. But like all fledgling birds, that first flight is make or break. One or two major accidents early in a program could set the industry back by decades. The motorcycle industry, for example, had a major advantage. They existed before the automobile. Measured by injury rates, I have no doubt that if motorcycles were introduced today, they would never be permitted by regulators. It's going to take the right package of regulation and a sensible commercial market for risk to create a viable air taxi industry. Now, we know everyone wants these flying cars. Will the major stakeholders work together to make it happen? We'll see. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For deeper engineering content, visit engineering.tv for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, not found here on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.